Good morning, YouTube. Let's continue. We'll take a look here at the TV guide or live TV interface for the DVB Link TV server. So, all of the viewing of live TV programs as well as your recordings is done off of the web streaming port, and that's the same port that you use for the other clients, like for instance here, and you can see there's my Android tablet, shows the same data, it's connected to the same server, I can play programs here, record individual programs, record series, and I can change the settings down here, but I'll just switch back up here, and you can see here, here's my favorites list. We looked at that in the last video. So you can see when I click on a program to view, if it's in the current time frame, I can view it, I can record it, or I can record the series, and then I can also share using the sharing template. So, and if you do play over the web streaming interface, so I pop up, a VLC window. So this uses the VLC media player. So this is the non-transcoding viewer interface. And again, this is in version 5.5. I believe in version 6 they include a built-in TV player client. So it doesn't use VLC. And you don't have a lot of interface. You can pause, you can stop, there's no fast forward or rewind, so there's basically no playback uh, buffer on this. And then uh, the way you can control that is if I go in here, for instance, I can do enable transcoding. Let's, uh, let's do something like this. I'll enable a 640 by 480 window, so it's going to reload here. And let's try that same program. And if I play it now, I get a built-in window. It takes a little longer to start, but now I have a, a transcoding window. But again, there's pause and play. Back up 10 minutes or no pause buffer, so to speak. There's color coding, things like news is a green color. I think it's a light green. Movies, dark green is kids programming. All the color coding, you have multiple days. I think by default they have three days of guide. You can go up or down from that. You can jump through the times. So that's pretty much the TV guide feature. And if you click on a program in the future, you can see the play button disappears, but I can record. So that's how you initiate recordings. You have to be able to click on a program that is in the current listing and you could search for a program that's in the listing and then click on it and then record it. So that's the way you record things under the TV recordings. So this shows you what you've already recorded and then down here there's the schedules button. You can do a manual recording and this is basically like your old VCR. You can give it a title and then you pick what channel and you pick what date, what time to start, what time to end. You know, it's just like the VCR programming model. But there's no wish list recording. You can't say uh, record any program with Adam West in it. <laughs> there's just no way to do that. In order to Record a program, it's got to be in the guide, or you can do that blind recording. Uh, on your recording playback, it'll also use ELC player. If you, and now I have a bar that I can skip through. I've got a timeline I can jump through back and forth. But there's no fast forward, rewind, there's no commercial skip feature. So that's one difference with Windows Media Center playback on TV recordings. Another difference here is if I again click on this program, you do get some metadata along with the program, series name, episode name. You have the uh, recording information, got your main actors, directors, writers, guests. 
There's no hot links here like you have in Media Center. I can't click on Fred Gwynn and go and find what movies or TV shows he was in and record those. Although I can do something like this, I can highlight and then search Google for Fred Gwynn and I can go to IMDB and find all the, the programs he was in, you know, My Cousin Vinny, but I can't initiate a recording from here. I can watch it on Amazon Video, but I can't record it off of the TV. That's something that's missing. You get that information, but it's not linked to anything. So this, all of this data here comes out of your program guide or EPG data. So this will vary depending on the source of program guide data that you get. In the U.S., there's pretty much two choices. One is you can use either the Media Center Guide Services or I'm using the XML TV that I get off of a, a subscription service or you can scrape it off of various websites. There's ways to get that sort of data. The other option is there's the PERC data, P-E-R-C data, that's a, supposed to be a little bit better metadata. I might take a look at that in a future video and see if it's significantly better than just the raw XML TV data. Then in Europe, in selected countries, they have their TV advisor package which gives you a much richer metadata, which might actually have thumbnails, like at least a thumbnail of that program that's coming up. Like you'll see here, none of these programs have any thumbnails because they haven't been on yet. The uh, TV recordings have a thumbnail because I've recorded the program and it's grabbed a snapshot out of the recording. So, yeah, it's a little bit different than Media Center. It's usable. You can see your recordings here. You can play them inside your house, play them on most any device. You can pipe them out through your router and view them from outside the house. You can log in and, and create recording schedules from externally. So that's something you can't do in Media Center. Now one thing you'll notice that's missing, I've got live TV programs, I've got recorded TV programs, I don't have any movies, I don't have any other media, there's no music, there's no pictures, there's no video library, where none of that is here. You can't play that in this package. Of course you could use Windows Media Player or Cody. Cody would be a good option for that because it includes the TV portion and then all the other media portions. So I can show you that here real quick. So yeah, here's my Cody media player. I won't go into this in great detail. I've done some other videos, but you can see I can include all those other features here. I can have videos, movies, TV shows, music, albums, music videos, all that sort of thing. And I have my DVB link TV channels here so I can tune the same channel, get the live TV playback. Now this one has a buffer. I can play it back. I can uh, I could start it viewing a program, pause for five minutes, and then I could skip over commercials, things like that. So in Kodi, you have a much richer playback than you do in the uh, plain DVB link client. Yeah, that's your interface in Kodi. Yeah, let's swing back down to uh, PC here. Yeah, let's just finish off here just looking at some of the settings you can do in the, in the client programs. So I showed you earlier the transcoding. Maybe you're connecting over your smartphone or tablet from outside your house and you only have, say, one megabit of upload speed on your internet connection. So you could, you could set up 1024 or 512 K bits and maybe drop the scale factor down. And then you also have your DLNA. I think that's what a lot of smart TVs use and a lot of these smart video players, Roku and all these uh, various devices, they'll, they'll use the DLNA. This 
package has a DLNA server and you can control that. Here's your recorder settings and then here's your sharing templates so you can customize what what happens when you you know if you mark a program that you like it don't like it or you want to send yourself a reminder and I think these can go out to social media sites I haven't used that before so, and then general you have your global transcoding yeah so that's that kind of covers the settings here and the, these sort of settings you don't have any of that in Windows Media Center so you've got a lot more control over where you can access your live TV and TV recordings I think this package is you know much more powerful in that respect it's missing some of the rich metadata features that you have in Media Center there and there's no wish list recording there's no other media this is just TV so again this is version 5.5 I'll be taking a look at version 6 which just came out in the first of June and it's supposed to have some slightly better features so that was one of the reasons I wanted to shoot these videos if I upgrade my system to version 6 I really can't go back and look at version 5.5 again but yeah, I think as a live TV interface, this is pretty good. And I've showed in uh, some of my earlier videos where I use this same package to create a smart TV out of a, quote, dumb TV. I stuck a Raspberry Pi on the back of a TV, plugged in the HDMI port, and had this sort of user interface on the TV. And I could use all of that uh, online guide data and I could record off the TV using the TV remote controls. If you have a smart TV you can interface it to this and if you have a dumb TV for $35 you can stick a Raspberry Pi on the back and access all of this too. I think this is a good way uh, to uh, tie all your media together and you have then just one place where you have all your recordings, you have your TV guide set up and configured and you can set up your favorites lists and do all of those things from one place and then access this from many places in your house or even outside if you set up the port forwarding. So I think it's a pretty nice package. It's got some limitations if you're used to Media Center. I think Cody helps get around some of those limitations. But So if you like these sorts of videos, uh, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And if you have any comments or questions, put that in the comment section down below the video. And as always, thanks for watching.